So we'll talk about this. All right, so Spellbreak. Spellbreak Development Studio, Prolaterate. Um, the Prolaterate, uh, I don't know exactly how you want to pronounce that, but that is how I'm going to pronounce it, so you can go suck a dick if you don't agree with that. Um, you want to know what Spellbreak is? Don't worry about it. No longer exists, doesn't matter. It is old news at this point. What's more important is that Blizzard Entertainment have acquired this studio and all of its workers. Now, it's about 100 plus uh, remote workers, and this entire studio have been absorbed into Blizzard Entertainment. So this is what Mike Yabara had to say about this acquisition. We are putting players at the forefront of everything we do, and we are working hard to both meet and exceed their expectations. Um, a big part of caring for our teams is making sure we have the resources to produce experiences our communities will love. Just make this a little bit smaller, just so everyone can see. Hopefully you guys can read that, just to make it a little bit bigger. Holy shit, go-kart, thank you so much for the five community subs. Really appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, can we get some hearts in chat? It's raining money, and I'm a slut. Let's go for it. Really appreciate that. Uh, opportunity with our products. Pro Prolaterate is a perfect fit for supporting Blizzard's mission in bringing high-quality content to our players more often. Now, I have a couple of things, obviously, that I'm kind of disagreeing uh, with Mike Yabara here, uh, and that is that they are putting players first in everything that they do. Did they put the players first with Diablo Immortal? I think not. Did they put the players first with Warcraft Reforged? I think not. Did they put players first with Diablo 3? I think not. Did they put players first with the uh, World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth? No. Uh, Shadowlands? Absolutely not. So, really, Mike Ybarra is speaking out of his ass, but then again, he has to say this, because the last thing a CEO of a company can say is, we're putting Wall Street and money first. Uh, that wouldn't really go off, go over well, not even with the WoW shills. Because right now, some of the WoW shills are sitting there, I'm like, oh my god, he, he really does. They really do put us first. Uh, he, he can't come out and say that that's not what they're doing. Uh, anyways, I don't... I, Jokes aside, I don't actually think that this is a lie in any way. I do believe that with Prolaterate being acquired, that is trying to put the players first. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. John Height had the following to say via Venture Beat. Um, as you probably are aware, folks in World of Warcraft have a voracious appetite for content, said Height. And what we've seen over the last year is that we need to increase the amount of content that we can create and the frequency with which we're putting it in the hands of our players. Now, uh, that's one of the things that made this decision easy for us to start working with Prolaterate, as they have a large remote workforce. All right, so John Height, um, I... <sighs> It's very difficult for me to take you guys serious when you say things like this, because you've been saying this for a really long time. One of the key uh, lines from Blizzard Entertainment, basically since its inception, is that we want to do more content more frequently. That has never happened, so I'm not holding my breath that it will happen now. That being said, though, I don't... I, I, think, I think the reason Blizzard keeps failing at doing that is because of their focus. Blizzard's focus continuously is on dungeons and raids. More dungeons, more raids, more systems. Here's why I think this is very good news for us in Dragonflight. I know, uh, this is like a 180 turn. Echelon, you've just been shitting on Blizzard for the last five minutes. Why are you now turning around? Well, because Dragonflight is completely different. In Dragonflight, there are no systems. The only system in Dragonflight is Dragon Riding, and that's not a power system. That That's literally a traversal system, and it's one that most people, at least anyone with brains, should agree is a pretty decent system and sounds like a really fun system. Uh, and if you don't like that system, just wait for flying to unlock, and then you can fly around wherever you want, although be it slower than uh, with your Dragon Riding. But that being said, that's the only system that we have in, in, Dragon, in Dragonflight. So what's this team actually going to do? What exactly is the job of this team? That's confusing to me. Uh, evening, are we gonna learn about 40k lore today? The big white, you bet your fucking ass we're gonna. More traversal, more good, yes, yes. No borrow power. If they're released in 2022, then a larger team is very necessary. I, I don't think so. So we can actually, that's actually the disco option. 
let me ask chat the following question. How many of you feel like 2022 is too soon for World of Warcraft Dragonflight? Dragonflight sucks. The whole expansion is probably going to be awful since the whole landscape is created around the concept of using Dragonflying to get around. But you know, that is a legitimate fear and, and one that I absolutely agree with. Uh, Jenna, Jenna, how you doing? Hey, my man. There will be more time gates one way or another. It's the Blizz way of handling things. If not, it will be a great shock to me. Um... In general, we, we can talk about time gates in, in a moment, although I don't have a... I'm not absolutely against time gates. I've never been 100% against time gates. My issue with time gates is when time gates don't make sense. So, for example, uh, if you look at the time gates that we had with covenants, covenant time gates were horrible. They were horrendous. Why? Because they didn't make sense. A lot of the time you'd get three quests, now you have to wait a week, but it doesn't make sense that you have to wait a week. Why am I waiting a week for this? Is there any reason for waiting a week for this? Uh, so I really disliked that about, uh, uh, like that aspect of time gating I hate, when it's so obvious that you're just trying to buy time. Um, but there are aspects of time gating that make sense. Remember, there is a limited amount of content that you can conceivably make if you give people access to all of the content right from day one there's going to be a ton of people that finish all of that content as soon as possible and then they're bored for the next three months waiting for more content to roll out so when it's when it makes sense some time gating can actually work uh the renowned story uh, story gating and then force grinding uh grind for the points ruined the entire questing experience that i can actually agree with um so for anyone that do think it's too soon, 2022, consider the following. Let's go back in history. BFA launches in beta. The world of BFA is 100% ready. The entire questing campaign experience, everything is done. Uh, most of the dungeons are done. Uh, the first raid is available for testing. Uh, what isn't done in BFA beta? Azerite armor isn't done. Legendaries aren't uh, a thing yet. The island expeditions aren't ready yet. I'm trying to think what else wasn't ready yet um, that we were promised. The war war fronts, war fronts were promised at the launch and obviously wasn't ready at launch. So a bunch of the systems wasn't ready. Like actually, the only things that wasn't ready was systems. The world was fine. The world was absolutely perfect. The things that weren't ready were all of the systems that they were still making. Shadowlands, let's go back to the beta of Shadowlands. The beta of Shadowlands launches, the world is fine. The, the world is playable. Um, the entire storyline for the world is playable. Conduits weren't ready from the beginning. Uh, Covenants and all the Covenant powers weren't ready from the beginning. Uh, Torghost was launched a little bit after the launch of the beta in its first edition which would then later get changed to a less valuable ed uh, edition, and the legendaries weren't ready. Again, the world was fine. The dungeons were fine. They were all in the game already. The one thing that wasn't fine, though, were all the systems. Dragonflight doesn't have any of those systems. Those systems don't exist in Dragonflight. Or in, yeah, in Dragonflight. So, yeah, I, I personally think the expansion is fine. I think the expansion is going to be ready uh, probably within the next four or five months. The only thing that Blizzard right now, I think, wants to get out of the way is some beta testing uh, to make sure that the classes are balanced and the people like the direction of the classes, maybe get some feedback on talents and stuff like that. But there are no systems that Blizzard needs to worry about designing, developing, balancing, or anything like that. Because, uh, well, they don't have to. They're, it doesn't exist in the game. The only thing that I'm a little bit worried about, as Machendo himself said, is dragon riding. So much in this expansion relies on dragon riding working. If dragon riding fails, that might be a huge issue. But anyways, back to... Back to the Spellbreak acquisition, and here we have uh, Seth from Spellbreak, or from Proletariat, um, actually saying the following. Spellbreak was a critical success, and we felt like we really delivered something fresh in the Battle Royale genre. There is a lot of competition in that area where you are competing with some of the biggest games in the world. We just couldn't get the escape velocity necessary for us to continue to expand it. Uh, as we look at where the next chapter was going to be at Prolatarit, uh, 
pro-proletariat, uh, this opportunity just meant that we could accelerate what we wanted to do. Being able to work for World of Warcraft audiences is really awesome, and the level of ambition on where I think both teams want to take World of Warcraft is incredibly exciting to us. The really exciting part is what we're going to build going forward. That was the real selling point for us, the level of ambition for what we want to do with World of Warcraft. I think, I think Blizzard acquired pro proletariat for the outdoor content that's what i think proletariat is going to be doing in world of warcraft more people aimed at casual outdoor content content for dragon riding content for exploring content for world uh, world bosses and world events uh, that's what i think pro uh, pro, pro proletariat uh, was brought in for um, we know that this, there's a brand new team at World of Warcraft working specifically on the outdoor world uh, and trying to make the outdoor world meaningful in some way, shape or form. And I think that's why Blizzard got these guys. Because technically speaking, I don't see why these guys would at all be important to Island Expeditions or anything like that. Is there anyone in the chat that ever played Spellbreak? I never actually played Spellbreak, so I know nothing about the game. I doubt these guys... I doubt these guys are going to be involved in any sort of long-term thing like housing, even though that would be really cool. If Blizzard could bring in people that start working on housing in World of Warcraft, that would be awesome. Uh, it's probably going to be another six, seven, eight months before we see whatever these guys are working on um, take shape, depending, of course, on what they're working on specifically. But yeah, it, it, it's. I think it's nice to see that Blizzard is bringing in a, a team of a different company for something very specific. So Blizzard didn't just merge these guys into the overall WoW like group. These guys were brought in for a very specific task and they're gonna be working within their own company, well, within their own uh, sort of team on this task and this task alone. I think that's kind of interesting. Now being said no to that, uh, too bored. Ian never said no. He said, we want to do housing. We just can't figure out how to do housing. Eliusha, how you doing, bro? Thank you so much for the tier one sub. Really appreciate that. Six months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are far too kind with all that money. I really appreciate it. Probably world content events. Dude, the world needs more content. So I am 100% on board with anything that provides more content to the world. Like 100%. Uh, just give me more fucking world content, please.